Dear friends, dear colleagues, please let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Amin Aqsa. I'm a pediatric surgeon working in Monastir Pediatric Surgery Department and also in the Medical School of Monastir Tunisia. I would like to speak about acute interception. Acute interception is an acute life-threatening condition in which one segment of the intestine unfolds into an adjacent distal segment. This is the first surgical emergency in infants and this pathology needs early diagnosis to prevent severe complications. For the pathogeny, we distinguish two forms of acute interception. First of all, idiopathic interception, which is seen in 90% of the cases. Here we will have infant between two months and two years. And also we have secondary interception to a local cause that can be Meckel's diverticulum, duplication, polyp or tumors. Let's begin by the first case, the idiopathic interception. Here we will have an intestinal or respiratory infection which will lead to hypertrophied Peyer's patches and also to mesenteric hypertrophied lymph nodes. This two notions will lead to interception. For the secondary interception, it can be like in this example, the Meckel's diverticulum or an intestinal polyp or the application or even a nictopic pancreas. Now, for the anathemopathology, we will treat the saucer-shaped mass in which we will have an opening and also a head. But the most important thing in uh, this picture is that we will have a compression not only of the intestinal lumen but also the mesentery will be compressed with the vein, the artery and the nerve and this compression is at the origin of the complication and the gravity of this pathology. Also we can have different anathemopathologic forms. We can have iliocolic form that is most frequent but we can have also ileal ileal form or colocolic forms that are rare and most often due to secondary interception. Now for the physiopathology First of all, we have the sausage migration that will progress with the peristaltism that can be stopped by the mesenteric vessels. If not, we'll have a protrusion by the anus. Regarding the compression, here we'll have compression of many structures. First of all, the lymphatic vessels and the veins that will lead to edema and will enhance the compression. We'll have also for the veins compression bleeding and also for the nerves compression we can have pallor and for the arteries compression we can have ischemia and after necrosis and perforation. This explains the necessity of an early diagnosis to avoid all these complications. Also will have effects on the abdominal transit and this will depend on the type of the interception. In the iliocolic interception here we will have a large opening and here we will have no occlusion in the beginning and the occlusion can appear late. And in the iliocolic interception here we will have a narrow opening and the occlusion form can be in the beginning. For the epidemiology, the frequency of interception is about 2 for 1,000 infants. And there is a predominance of the male uh, sex in this pathology. Now what about the clinical features? And here we will describe the iliocolonic interception in infant. The most constant sign is abdominal pain. Here we will have a sudden appearance of intermittent, paroxysmal, crampy abdominal pain. The child initially acts normal between the cramps but then become lethargic. First sign, abdominal pains. Second sign is the vomiting that is observed in two-thirds of the cases that is alimentary in the beginning and after can become, can become uh, bilious in the late form. Also we can have refusal of the bottle. The third sign is the anal bleeding that can be seen in 
50% uh, of uh, the cases. Here we can have bloody rectal discharge after rectal examination with the current jelly stools uh, uh, that can be a late finding. We can have fresh bleeding, blood mixed with stools or melena. We should not wait bleeding to think about interception because the three signs are associated in only one case to foo. So when we have only one sign, think about interception. Other signs can be observed like pallor. The fever is not constant, but sometimes we can have fever due to this viral, viral agent. Other physical signs can be seen like the palpation that can reveal a sauce-shaped intra-abdominal mass. The rectal touch can also make us see bleeding or also can palpate this sauce mass. Here some messages must be taken for this clinical part. If you have only one sign in uh, interception, which means only abdominal pain or vomiting or bleeding, think about interception. The association of the three signs with the sausage palpation is seen in only 25% of, uh, of cases. If you think to interception, begin, please prescribe your radiologic exam in urgent way. And this radiologic exam can be First of all, the abdominal X-ray, but you know, abdominal X-ray is uh, less and less uh, done because it's source of irradiation. But uh, if, if, if it is done, you must know that uh, if normal, this not this do not rule the diagnosis out the diagnosis. We can have some uh, times an abnormal uh, disruption of the intestinal gas. But uh, the most efficient. Uh, uh, radiologic exam to assess the diagnosis of interception is abdominal ultrasound. Ultrasonography can show us the target or the pseudo-kidney pseudo sign. So we can have this target sign or the pseudo-kidney sign. Look, remember, ultrasound is very efficient in the diagnosis of uh, interception with the two sign, target sign or pseudo-kidney uh, sign. The enema the enema can be done for diagnosis, but also for therapeutic uh, aspects. It's contraindicated in case of lethargic baby or peritoneal size of or presence of pneumoperitoneum. Uh, it's positive when it shows as uh, a target sign, like you see here, or callus sign or lobster lobster claw uh, claw sign. Here we describe it a typical form of interception, but we can have other uh, forms of interception like occlusive forms, which can be seen in late forms or ileal forms. Here we will have in the first plan uh, abdominal distension and bilious uh, vomiting. We can have also secondary forms that can be seen in any age. The local cases can be makers diverticulum tumor, polyp or duplication. Ileal form also is a particular uh, form of interception here. The occlusion uh, will be seen at the beginning and the enema cannot do the diagnosis. This is the ultrasound that can only do the diagnosis in, uh, in interception, in ileal interception. We can have also interception after gastroenteritis. Here the diagnosis is difficult. You must think about it when you have bleeding, subocclusion or paroxystic pain. We can have also particular situation like uh, in chemotherapy or after surgery we can have in sometimes uh, post-operative uh, interception. Now what about the treatment? Uh, the treatment is based on two things. First of all, the radiologic reduction and the surgery. Let's begin by the radiologic reduction that can be done with three methods. First of all, the contrast enema that is done under scopic control with medication. We can use Valium, Ipnovel, uh, whatever. You can use uh, for the product uh, Barium or uh, Hydrosoluble. The use of Hydrosoluble is suitable, is better. And here, this is very important we must have a low pressure, uh, less than 80 centimeters of water to prevent any uh, perforation, any iatrogenic perforation. And this reduction should be done near an operating room. Uh, no, uh, uh, it 
it not con it uh, cannot be done by anyone. It can it must be done by audiologist with the presence of the pediatric surgeon and the OR must be uh, also aware of uh, the risk that this patient can be uh, can go to the operating room. There is some contraindication like uh, peritoneal size or pneumoperitoneum. This is how we are doing this uh, radiologic uh, this radiologic reduction. We use uh, a container in which we will put the hydrosoluble and we will put it in uh, some haze. And as you know, this is a physical uh, physical rule. Uh, the most uh, the, 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 the container will be high, uh, the pressure will be higher also. So we must uh, also uh, be aware of this and don't put this container very high, otherwise this can be a cause of perforation of the intestine. And uh, here we'll have success criteria with opacification of all the colon and the cecum and the opacification of the ileal loops. So here we'll have uh, an example of the progression of the uh, enema so the product that is injected by uh, the anus will push push these uh, sources till we will have a massive uh, massive opacification of the intestine like you see in this example so this is the first method that we can uh, use. You must be aware that there is a perforation risk if you don't respect the precaution. And you see here uh, the product that pass in all the uh, peritone. The second method that we can use in the radiologic rejection is the uh, reduction with air. This is a historical Chinese technique and it's a clean uh, method. So here, instead of using uh, water, we will use air by uh, using a manometer to regulate the, the pressure and we will uh, inflate uh, progressively and the air also will push, push, push this uh, calentine will have uh, an opacification uh, like this uh, of the air or passage of the air uh, in the small intestine. We can also use a third method with which, which is the reduction using saline under ultrasound uh, control. Here the uh, benefit is uh, that uh, we have no uh, irradiation and here uh, the radiologist will follow us with his uh, with the, the ultrasound and we will see the progression of the uh, the sausage and the progression of the liquid that will push also here uh, the, the colon and we'll have uh, uh, the passage of the liquid in the uh, intestine here the cl clinical criteria for success the patient will be calm no pain with uh, normal feeding these are criteria uh, that can be seen in all the methods uh, that we will use for uh, reduction of course uh, the second the second uh, way uh, that we can do for uh, interception is surgery uh, surgery is indicated when enema is not indicated and when we have a reduction uh, fi uh, failure here uh, we can use laparoscopy or use uh, laparotomy and this is very important we should squeeze uh, the sausage between uh, our uh, our uh, hand and not uh, not uh, do like this because this can be source of perforation and uh, sometimes we can have uh, necrosis and here uh, we should do uh, a resection anastomosis. Sometimes we can have secondary uh, cause like polyp or like uh, Meckel's uh, diverticulum. For the result, uh, the recurrence can be seen uh, in 10% of cases after hydrostatic reduction, in 3% of cases after surgery. This is very important. You should always inform the parents of the risk of uh, recurrence. And if recurrence, uh, we should uh, search a leading, a leading point. So, in conclusion, antisusception is a life-threatening pathology. In most of the cases, it's idiopathic. And uh, this is very important. We should uh, insist on early diagnosis to avoid major complications like necrosis, and you can even lose your patient. So, early diagnosis is very important. And the treatment is always hydrostatic reduction, and if uh, there is contraindication or in case of failure, surgery will uh, be uh, used. Thank you very much for your attention.